Hey everyone, welcome back to Engineering Education. For this next problem, we have a control systems problem, and we're given the following second order closed loop system model. So the transfer function y of s divided by r of s is given by 100 divided by s squared plus 2s plus 144, where y of s is the output of the system and r of s is the input of the system. And we're asked to find the damped natural frequency omega d. So as always, pause the video, give it a shot. And we'll go over the answer in a bit. So to solve this, we go to the FE handbook. And in the FE handbook, there's an instrumentation, measurement, and control section. And that section has a subsection called second order control system models. And there's a transfer function here, a y of s divided by r of s, that looks similar to the one that we have in our problem. And here, k is the steady state gain. This Greek letter zeta is the damping ratio. Omega n is the undamped natural frequency. So that is the frequency when there's no damping, when the damping is equal to zero. And omega d, which is the damped natural frequency, which is the frequency when there is damping. So I'm going to take these equations and I'm going to write them on the next page. So here I've rewritten the equations from the last page. The only difference here is that instead of zeta, I replaced it with gamma, just because gamma is easier to write than the Greek letter zeta. So we can take this template of a transfer function and set it equal to our actual transfer function, because it has to have the same form. So 100 s squared plus 2s plus 144. And here we can group the terms. So we have the s squared terms, we have the s terms, and we have the constants. And so to solve this, we just go omega n squared is equal to 144. And then we solve for omega n. So omega n is 12. And we do that same thing for the second term. So the second term is 2 gamma omega ns is equal to 2s. And here the 2s cancel and the s's cancel, giving us 1 on the right-hand side and gamma omega n on the left-hand side. So we can solve for gamma, which is our damping coefficient as 1 over omega n, which is 1 over 12. So now that we have gamma and now we have omega n, we can plug it into our equation for omega d and solve for omega d. So omega d is going to be 12 times the square root of 1 minus 1 12th squared. And that is equal to 11.96 radians per second. And that is our answer. So what does that mean? That means that if we have a damping coefficient of 1 over 12, then our frequency will decrease from the 12 radians per second, which was omega n, to omega d, which is 11.96. So we're going to have a drop in frequency as this gamma factor becomes larger. So to explain this a little bit, there are three types of damping. You have under damping. So under damping. You have critical damping. And lastly, you have over damping. And so underdamping occurs when gamma is less than 1, critical damping occurs when gamma is equal to 1, and overdamping occurs when gamma is greater than 1. And if gamma is equal to 0, then that is an undamped system. So for an underdamping system, is one of the most common ones, which is the one that we have here. 112 is less than 1. We have a system that looks like this. It's a decaying oscillation. 
And so the envelope looks like this. And so we can think of damping as some sort of friction force that is going to take our signal and decay it down to zero. So for the undamping case, or the underdamping case, we oscillate to zero. For critical damping, for critical damping, there is no oscillations, and the signal goes straight to zero. It's a very fast transition to zero. And so we can see in omega d here that when gamma is equal to 1, gamma squared is equal to 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, and therefore omega d will be 0. And the last case is the overdamping case. So that's when gamma is greater than 1. And for this type of system, we have, similar to the critical damping, in the fact that it doesn't oscillate, but it takes forever for it to get to zero. So it'll eventually get there, or maybe not, it could be, it could take infinitely long. And so this is a very slow decay to zero. And of course, these are all functions of time. So that's all I got. If you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And also, please share this with your friends or anybody else that you think might benefit from this information. Thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, enjoy engineering.